ark was the sanctuary of righteousness. And this week's Torah portion contains the concluding revelation of this very truth. Israel was and Israel is and always has been destined to become the dwelling place of the name. The dwelling place of his power. The dwelling place of the glory. You know why the church don't care what we're doing, Pastor Dave? I'll tell you guys. You want to know why? Because most that are observing Shabbat, not saying in here, but most that are observing it, it does not look fruitful. It does not look like a pleasant garden. It doesn't look like what Genesis is. Where is the fruitful place that man will be drawn to? It looks like a boring, religious, robotic act. Your seats seat aren't long enough. You said the name wrong. You know what? You can have all of that. Show me the manifestation power of my Father's name. If you can't manifest the power of my Father's name, put your seat seat in your pocket. Put your keeper where it goes, where it needs to go. Put, fold your tallit up because you're playing religion and demons want to come under that and dance with you. You've got to produce the power of his name. Yeshua was the sanctuary of the Father's name. And he said, Abba, I've said this a thousand times in this probably same spot. He said, Father, I have manifested your name to them. That's what is needed in this day and hour. We've got to be manifestation of his name. Let me back up. We've got to manifest his name and be the manifestation of that name, not the infestation of religion. Because his spirit comes to do what? Fumigate and renovate that temple because it's not, that's not how it's supposed to be. That's not what's up. No, that's what's down. What's up needs to come down. And manifest here in the midst of his people. Is that all right? We're to become the dwelling place of, of his authority, the dominion, and the kingdom. And this is the true sum of all that we have re read regarding the tabernacle revelation. Pekude from Pakad means a census, an account, and to inspect to attend to something, pakad. Pekude holds a revelation inside of itself with the Hebrew word kinim, which means rooms. So what the Father is teaching us in this reckoning, this accounting of the materials of the tabernacle, he's saying, I'm showing you that you've got to make room for me. There's got to be, I've got to be in all the rooms of your life. I've got to be in the rooms of your mind. I've got to be in the rooms of your conversation. I've got to be in the room of your selfie. I've got to be in the rooms of your life. You know how they go. And heaven's looking like this. We're long suffering with that generation. Pekude also contains the revelation of the bones, as I said. Etsem has the same numerical system built into it, found in Genesis 2.23. 2.23 where it says, bone, Adam says, this is now bone of my bones. The bone of my bones. Adam was the sanctuary of the light of his bride. Adam was the sanctuary for the bride to be. He didn't see. Oh, man. It's for somebody. The father didn't let Adam see what she looked like at first. He showed her the essence first. Don't be fooled by what you see. Be an investigator of the essence of that bride-to-be or that husband-to-be. Look at the essence of who they are, not the tangible right away. Don't fall for that. Young ladies, if the men are impatient, if, those young, if a man's impatient when it comes to wanting to get with you in the beginning, you're dealing with a little bratty boy. Because love is patient. 
Love is kind. It's not like, hurry up, come on, we're going to be married anyways. No, love is patient. Lust is not. Love is kind. Lust is not. You got to look at the essence, the essence of who Adam was. Let me keep moving on. Let's look at the days of creation briefly. Because everything was sanctuaried within itself. That's the, this whole, our, our whole life, all of creation, the Father is showing us it's been, it's always been about a sanctuary. I just want a sanctuary. I desire veshakanti betocham, and I will dwell within them. Will you be my sanctuary? Will you allow me to live through you, not just in you, through you, through you. Let the, I want the world to see me through you. The first day of creation, it says in Psalm 104, verse 2, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Exodus 26, verse 7, Dave had touched on some of this. And you shall make curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the Mishkan. Parallel, second day of creation. Genesis 1, 6, let there be light. And let it divide between the waters and the waters. Exodus 26, And the veil shall divide for you between the holy and the holy of holies. The third day of creation, Genesis 1, 9. Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. Makom echad. One united place. Exodus 30, verse 18 says, And you shall make a copper laver for washing in one place. Makom echad. The fourth day of creation, Genesis 1.14, let there be luminaries in the heavens. Let me back up. The day three, day three, I recovered that. Day four, all right. Let there be luminaries, meor, in the heavens. Exodus 25, verse 31, you shall make a menorah of pure gold. Every day of creation, sanctuaried order. When you come to a place or go to a ministry and you enter in and the first thing that starts to nudge you is order, embrace that order so your light can shine. Embrace that coming from different angles. It's only to cause you to illuminate your giftings that are concealed inside of you so it will minister to all of those that come to this sanctuary. Don't run from it. Embrace it. Day five, right? Let the fowl above the earth. Exodus 25, the cherubim shall spread their wings upward. Each day of creation as we can keep going on and on and on and on. The seventh day became, can I say it like this? No, let me back up. Yeah, I want to say it. The seventh day was the sanctuary of the six days of creation. The seventh day, in a sense, was the womb, was the mother to the six days of creation. That's why the seventh day did not have a beginning and an ending. It was never created like that. The seventh day gave birth, if I could say that, by the way of the spoken word And the six days of creation, which were sanctuaries of their own, now the seventh day was empty. No wonder the scripture says something. Very interesting. It says this in Hebrew, Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. And Elohim Sabbathed from all he had through the seventh day. Vayecha Elohim bayom hashvi'i. Elohim blessed and sanctified the Sabbath day. Vaikadesh otoki bo Shabbat, and he sanctuaried in it because through him he Sabbath. The Sabbath became the essence within the sanctuary of the seventh day. Does that make sense? That's how it looks in Hebrew. You can look it up yourself. Through his completed word, he made the sanctuary for Sabbath called the seventh day. The seventh day became the holy of holies 
for Shabbat while the Shabbat was the glory of that seventh day. We're not showing the glory, and I'm speaking in general, globally. We've got to show the glory of his Shabbat as a light to the nations, and they'll be drawn in. The menorah had the old material of the, of the priest as their wicks. You have a lot of people that want to put on the old priesthood garments and they only risk becoming Pharisees. You're that piece of wick hindering the light and the Father's got to scoop you out so that the light can shine at its brightest. You don't want to be one of them. We don't want to be one of them. We won't be one like that. The seventh day was once the sanctuary for all six days, and she was emptied out by way of, quote, unquote, Elohim said. Elohim said. Elohim said. That's why all you heard the Messiah, we were talking on the phone, Yeshua qualified this truth by saying, it is written. It is written. It is written. The battle's not ours. We've just got to repeat what Abba has said. God has said. Elohim said. He said this. What are you doing? You're igniting the very light of the sanctuary within your life. You're coming in agreement with what Father says. When Adam was created and formed, he was to officiate from this dimension called Shabbat. The seventh day, as I said, was the sanctuary for all of these. The Sabbath caused the seventh day to become the clothing, the garment, the celestial essence, the sanctuary for his Sabbath. And it, it, it's, the, the Shabbat is more, but it's beyond a day. Religion sees it as a day. Those who come into it see it as part of the garments of the new Jerusalem. It is the presence of the Father. It is the essence of life. Not a religious practice. If we make it a religious practice, we run. But when life is faced with death, the little spark of life within that tohu vabohu will reach out to that like a seed busting through cement. Trying that little... The little blade of grass that was covered with tohu vabohu is constantly reaching up to the Father saying, I know that there's life somewhere. I'm not going to stop until I get a hold of it. I'm going to keep pressing through. I know that some of this asphalt I put all by myself. A lot of this asphalt is my own fault because of my own. The Melchizedek order operates through and from this place called Shabbat. The tabernacle was a picture of his Sabbath bride radiating to the whole world. And look at what our king did. He said, I want you to look beautiful. I want you to be talked about at the end of the book. They'll hear my voice, but I want you. John? You put the description of my bride in great detail. Do you understand? Yes. I want the world to see the beauty of my queen. As a matter of fact, she's so beautiful that it is said that she comes down adorned as a bride, the new Jerusalem out of heaven. Oh, I'm, I'm jumping to the end. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Elohim is seen throughout the creation account. And when the, when, when the buildup to Adam takes place, Yahweh steps in on the creational scene. Elohim speaks. Remember, it's seen throughout the creative act. But now when the masterpiece is seen, oh, goodness gracious. The Father saying, now that I've created all things, my masterpiece, I'm going to manifest my name to him because I want him, the Adam, to manifest my name throughout the world, infuse 
the creative order that I've delegated my power and authority and dominion to you, Adam, and fuse all creation with my name. Manifest my name everywhere you go. If there's something that's dying, I want you to speak my name in them. Manifest my name because I manifested my name to you, Adam. Yahweh's revealed because the creative work would now be delegated to Adam and the woman, specifically Adam. That was their name. Adam would now be delegated with the work of tikkun, repair, to what was once a world of tohu vabohu. Tohu vabohu, desolate and empty. Tohu. This might be way out there. I'm telling you, he, he, he just drops things in my spirit. I'm like, what in the world? Tohu vabohu is what Adam and the woman became. Bohu vabohu has the exact same value as Chaba. She was, at, she was the bride of Tohu after the fall. That's why Chaba don't mean mother of the living. Chaba is a Hebrew word that means a skin tent. Adam, look at, look at, look at the power of, of the love of the, of the Most High. They both fell and the Creator left it in Adam's lap to see. I want to see if there's still a spark of something in me, in you, of me, Adam. You name her. What will you name her? He names her Chava. In other words, the husband said, I don't want the world to see her shame because I'll stand off and let them see mine. He clothed his bride in a tent, a covering called Chava, while he remained Adam, naked and ashamed. He clothed her after the fall. You can read it yourself. When the eyes of Adam and the woman were opened, Genesis 3, it says, Va tipakach, va, va tipakach na ene. Their eyes were opened. This was the evidence that you have fallen. Your eyes become open to the world around you, and that's all you know. That's why fear can go to hell. Why? Fear deals with the sight of something. There's, there's so much in here I could not cover. I wish I could. The Mishkan was also revealing that man once had no gateway of access to Tohu Vabohu until he ate of the forbidden sanctuary called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The mystery is concealed in the bone of Adam, Atsam, which means to have closed eyes, closed eyes, closed eyes. Etsam bone is also Atsam, which means eyes that are closed. Eyes that are closed to temptation. Eyes that are closed to the desires of this world. Eyes that are only closed to that which would keep me from you. That means my eyes are wide open to you. That makes me the bone of Adam. When your eyes are closed to the sin of this world, now you're walking as the bone of Adam. It's him. When your eyes are at some closed to this world's ways of sin, you become the etsem, the bone of the last Adam, which is the bone of heaven. In Exodus 28, verse 41 to 43, before this Torah portion, it says that Aaron and his sons were to be immersed, clothed, anointed, and consecrated. And it says this, you shall anoint them and you shall consecrate them. In Hebrew, it's umileta et yadam, which means you shall fill their hands with authority. You see why the Hebrew language was much more powerful? You shall fill their hands with authority. Not, not, not dunamis. The enemy has dunamis, but the enemy does not have authority. That's why the Mashiach says, I have all authority over all the power, dunamis, of the, of the enemy. Authority is the master general over all dunamis explosive power. And he's given that into our hands because of his priesthood. 
Yeshua said, all authority has been given to me, and he delegated that authority to those in him after the order of Melchizedek. He placed that authority in our hands, and we are obligated to execute his dominion here on the earth through and after the order of Melchizedek. The ones called to priestly order are given the authority for service here on the earth. The Hebrew word for authority is tokef in this phrase. It means might, power, ability to do something, authority to prevail and to overcome. He says, I've given you all of that in your hands. All you have to do is just let it loose. Just let it loose. You know what the greatest animal you have to wrestle with is your animal nature. That's the the greatest beast you have to, that's more powerful than the beast system. Because you could still say no to the beast system and control your animal nature, maybe be wiped out, I don't know. But you never never wavered. The beast within is more powerful than a beast system. That's the most challenging. When you can overcome the infiltrating beast nature within and give all the room to his spirit, you can overcome anything in the world. You can overcome all that comes your way because you know what? You, you wrestled with the lions and the bears within your own life. These giants look like grasshoppers to you. These challenges don't look that big. Don't give me Saul's armor. It's not going to fit. The, the warfare of the world is not made for this sanctuary. There is a weapon within me that you haven't seen yet. Just let me at him. I'm going to manifest the Father's name. And what did King David say? He says, you come to me with a javelin and with a sword, with the ways of the world. I come to you by the name of the master uh, general of the armies of heaven. And he defeated that giant. You defeat the giants in your life if your sanctuary is saturated with him. Women, if that husband has not come to you with a sanctuary in advance, there's still still hope to build one. But that husband has got to bring the sanctuary to the wife. Because guess what? She might see that man on the outside, that tabernacle on the outside, but her spirit's desiring a full, mature, grown, complete sanctuary to take care of this. Right? All the women should have said amen and hallelujah. The husband's right there pinching. You better not. (laughs) Tokef. Tokef, the authority. To not walk in authority is to walk in a place of death. That numerical connection to Tokef is Getzalmavet, Getzalmavet, the valley of the shadow of death. The Melchizedek order comes with kingdom authority. And this is why we shall fear no evil. Say fear no evil, no evil. No evil. Fear no evil because he is with us. We are his tabernacle now. We cast the image and the likeness of the Son of God of Elohim in the face of all chaos. Another powerful connection with this phrase is seen in the phrase Yeshua Melech Sadiq Yosef Gol El Lenu, which means Yeshua, the Melchizedek, is Joseph, our Redeemer. Fascinating. Fascinating. The Redeemer is the one who overcomes the valley of the shadow of death. And the tabernacle pictured a valley of the shadow of death. Joseph was given a special high priestly garment just as Elohim spread a a celestial type robe over all the universe, all the cosmos that was like a fashion tabernacle. We also see throughout scripture this revelation of what Elohim was doing way back in Genesis Those heavens were measured out. His rakia firmament was recalculated with all the details. Adam is clothed in light. Let's look at this now. Noah, giving you examples of a sanctuary. Adam was clothed in light. Noah built the ark, which was also known as a world mountain, Hateva, 
What Noah was in was like a microcosm of the world of those cosmos as well. Three levels that mirrored the earth and the heavens above. What was beneath this cosmos was a marine world of chaos and demonic opposition in the days of Noah. So Noah had clothed all in the ark, and what radiated from within the ark out of a small window called a tsohar was light shining out of it and into the world of darkness. The Father's looking for a sanctuary. That's what this whole Bible's about, is a sanctuary place for his presence here on earth. The whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the garments of light that Adam wore was his sanctuary. The ark was the sanctuary. Yahweh Elohim is after the mikdash, the sanctuary. The, each garment of Aaron was a sanctuary of revelation regarding the royal priesthood of Yeshua. Holiness that becomes tangible is called the sanctuary. And even the, this sanctuary that contained the table of showbread, the menorah, the altar of incense, also had a sacred space called a holy of holies. Another word for this most holy place is called Hadabir. Hadabir. Dabir comes from Dabar, which means the word. This word is seen in the revelation of Yeshua in John 1.1 as the Lagos. John 1.1 speaks of the Dabar, the Lagos, taking on the flesh of a tabernacle, Mishkan. The Lagos was the sanctuary for Elohim and the authority and the dominion and the power to redeem his people. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says this, And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself in Yeshua the Messiah and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. He was in the Messiah. That was his sanctuary. Now we are in Yeshua the sanctuary. We are missing it. We are in him now. We are in the sanctuary of royalty. To wit that God was in Messiah, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Give Abba a praise. Mashiach was the sanctuary for Elohim. And through this sanctuary called the Word, called the Lagos, Elohim did a let there be within all of us. <laughs> the world says, you are this. But the Father says, uh-uh, let them be this. You're this, but I call you this. They, the world says, you're this, but I have called you this. Haya, let there be this. The Lagos is the sanctuary of the Rhema word that we're supposed to live by.